Hello and welcome to Yellowfin's Advanced Content Writer Training. This training is designed to pick up where the basic content writer training left off and expand on your knowledge and teach you how to uh, build more advanced reports, dashboards and uh, other content. So what are you going to cover in this lesson and what are you going to learn? Well, by undertaking this lesson, you're going to start out by creating more advanced visualizations. So previously, you would have just looked at the basic chart types, such as pies, lines, and so on. And we're really going to build on this and explore some of the other possibilities. From there, we're also going to have a look at KPI reports and tabs. And these are a specialty format report that we display on a specialty format tab. Uh, and it basically allows you to monitor your data, but we will explore that shortly. Uh, we're also going to have a look at how parameters work in reports. And then we're going to explore both related reports and subquery reports, which really are the most advanced types of reports available in the system. And finally, we'll learn how to create more advanced dashboard tabs. So in the first session, you would have had a look at creating your own basic personal tab. And that, that pretty much would have consisted of dragging in reports and resizing them. And from there, we're really going to learn how to set up interactions between different reports and link them all together so that it's uh, far more dynamic. Okay, so let's get started. As I said before, we're going to start with charts and the first thing we're going to explore in charts is time series functions. And basically what time series is when you add it to a chart is the conversion of an axis from a categorical axis to a date scale or a time scale. Uh, if that doesn't really make sense yet, don't worry, we will show you an example and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, basically it allows you to convert the axis and, and really do a lot more date functionality. And it enables things like the use of a date slider, unit selection, and yearly comparison amongst other options. So we're going to explore that. Then we're also going to look at some specialty chart types. Now Yellowfin has a, a really wide variety of visualizations available through the chart builder. So we won't look at all of them today, uh, but we will explore a handful of those to give you an idea as to how they work. And really once you know how to set up a few different chart types, the rest are pretty easy to work out. Once we've created a few charts, we're going to revisit the multi-chart canvas. Now we had a little uh, impromptu uh, introduction into that in the basic content writer session, but we really are going to explore how the multi-chart canvas works. And to give you an idea of what it is, uh, if you don't remember from previous uh, sessions, it's basically a way of displaying multiple charts on the one report output. And it allows you to display multiple charts within one little report area on a dashboard as well. So what you can do, and this is an example of one, is create several charts and actually combine that with other pieces of content such as uh, text and images and icons uh, to create things like these little infographic style displays. And really it's just limited by your creativity I'm relatively limited because my creativity isn't great, so hopefully uh, you have more than I do. If you don't, it's a really good idea to work with uh, different team members to help you out with this kind of thing. So if you're not great at the design aspect, maybe go and talk to one of the designers in the marketing team or uh, someone in sales or something like that and see what they have to say. Uh, and then from this session, we'll definitely learn how to build those. Once we've had a look at the multi-chart canvas, we're then going to expand and have a look at maps. And there's quite a variety of mapping options available in Yellowfin. Uh, they range from image maps, or what we call raster maps, which allow you to create a kind of a map based on an image file rather than based on geographical data. 
So say, for example, you have sales data that you're measuring and that's what you're creating your reports on, but you don't actually have individual latitude and longitude of each store or customer or whatever you're wanting to map. Uh, you can use a raster map in order to kind of achieve a similar look. And then our maps go all the way through to proper GIS maps. Now, if you're not uh, familiar with those, basically they're geographical maps and they require specific data in order to be created. Um, we did have a quick look at geopacks in the basic content creator uh, session and you can use geopacks in order to create GIS maps. All right, from there, we're going to have a look at some of the trending and forecasting functionality available in the chart builder. And again, this is one of those things that's very, very easy to implement, uh, but you do kind of need to know what you're after um, forecasting and trend wise in order to make the right selection uh, and add it to your chart correctly. So um, including forecasting and trends is very easy. You just need to make sure that you have the correct understanding as to what you're actually seeing. All right, so what we're going to do before we move on is leave the storyboard and have a look at those charts. So I'm just going to begin by creating a report and we're returning to this left side navigation. Once again, if you don't have this create menu or you don't even have the left side navigation, you will have a create button on the right. So it'll be a little yellow button over here. Uh, it's exactly the same functionality. It's just that uh, some system administrators would choose the button over the panel and vice versa. So I'm just going to create a report. And all of our reports, again, are going to be based on Ski Team. And so what I'm going to do now is just add a few pieces of data. So we're going to initially look at that time series uh, functionality. So what I'll do is add a date field so that we can explore that fully. Then what I'm going to do is just add a couple of metrics so that we can explore those. So we'll just add a couple of fields in. All right, so this is a very basic report, uh, but don't worry about that too much because we're really concentrating on the visualizations at this point. So we'll just progress to the chart step. And what I'm going to do is add some fields in here and a very standard display for uh, time series charts is that of a line chart. So we're going to go straight to that. We're not going to waste any time with the auto chart today. And we'll just drag our fields in. So this is what we're going to start out with. And on my date field, if I click on this little arrow here, I actually get some options. So at the moment, I've got time series enabled. And Yellowfin will often do that if it realizes the field is a date or a timestamp. Um, I'm just going to turn it off to explain what we're seeing. So what we're now seeing is uh, not the most pleasant looking report. <laughs> Basically what's happening here is we have what we call a categorical x-axis. Uh, so our invoice date is running across that bottom x-axis and what it's doing is it's taking every date that we have a transaction for and plotting it evenly spaced across the bottom. So say we have invoices for the first and the second of the month, but then we didn't have anything for a week because our system went down, and the next transaction we have a record for was the 8th. What would happen in this kind of chart is we would have the first, then we would have an even space, and then the second, and then we would have an even space, and then the 8th. So it's just progressively plotting all of the data it has. If I change this to a time series, just take note of the shape of the lines there. You'll notice that the shapes have actually changed and it kind of looks like we might have some seasonality or some cyclical data going on here. What's happening now is along the x-axis, we're actually plotting things according to a proper time or date scale. 
So again, working with that example of having data for the first and the second and then nothing until the eighth, what happens now is we actually plot the first, then the second, and then we still plot the third through to the seventh. But we just don't have any points for that point in time. I uh, probably could have used a different word there, but anyway. <laughs> so what happens now is using time series functionality, Yellowfin displays gaps in our data where previously it would have just skipped them. So once we've got time series enabled, we have a few extra functions that we really should make use of. The first of those is the unit selection. So you'll see we have this unit option here. And what we're currently using is day. So my transactions are stored at a daily level, so we, we store them every day. Uh, but if I want to sum those up, I can select a different unit. And what will happen is my table will still retain each day's records, but my chart will sum those up to, say, month. So if I click month, we'll start to see points by month. Okay, so you can see that. If we changed it again, we could change it to year just to make it clear. And so on. So I'm just going to leave it on month. The next lot of functionality we're going to explore here is uh, in, the interact in the interaction section. Uh, so the first thing we're going to enable is unit selection. And this basically allows the user to select the unit themselves. So we've just picked month, but the user might want week or quarter. So this will allow them to do that when they run the report. We're also going to use the date slider. And we did explore both of these features uh, within the basic content, or it might have even been the uh, original session, the consumer session. Uh, but this is how you enable them and build. So once you enable that date slider, we can specify the position of it relative to the chart. So I really want my date slider to be at the bottom of the chart. It seems more logical to me. Uh, and I want it to display 100% of the data. So show me the whole range. And I can select a font if I want. So I'll just close that. Now, if you enabled that functionality and come back to your chart and, and are worried that you're not seeing it, that's okay. This chart preview step is really just designed to show you the chart itself and not some of the extra interactive functionality. So what we need to really do is move on to the output step and explore that functionality. So what you'll see now is we have our unit selection on the page and the user will be able to select those. And then we have our date slider, and they'll be able to manipulate that. Okay, so we'll just return to our data step, and now what we're going to do is disable drill down for the moment. We're not using it, and what this allows us to do is make use of a different type of uh, time functionality called yearly comparison. So we're going to go into this time format menu now and enable this yearly comparison option. So basically what this does is it converts the x-axis to be one year, one calendar year's worth of data. And it goes from January through to December. And then what it does is it creates a line for each year's worth of data so that you can actually compare, okay, uh, I can compare several years worth of August data and I can say, well, look, most of the time August doesn't have many sales. Um, but here in 2014 and 2013, we had quite a few. So maybe we need to go back and examine what we were doing at that point in time to increase our sales. Um, is it something that we can repeat? So it's a really great way of comparing different years worth of data at the same time and examining uh, seasonality and things like that.